I'm reading from my favourite American cookbook. It's called White Trash Chicken by Ernest Matthew Mickler. It is somewhat tongue-in-cheek. It's written with affection and it's hilarious. <laughs> I think so. Anyway, I'm going to read um, his introduction. But the book is dedicated to his mother. No, it's not his mother. Anyway, somebody called. I'll take my glasses off now so I can read. This book is dedicated to Betty May Swilly, the best cook in Rolling Fork, Mississippi, <laughs> and to Robert, who found her on a tombstone. Now, I'm obviously, I'm, I would love to read this in the, you know, with a southern accent, but I'm not up to it. <laughs> So, I'm going to read you uh, his intro. Never in my whole put-together life could I write down on paper a hard, fast definition of white trash, capital W, capital T. Because for us, as for our southern white trash cooking, there are no hard and fast rules. We don't like to be hemmed in. But the first thing you've got to understand is that there's white trash, lowercase, and this white trash, uppercase. Manners and pride separate the two. Common white trash has very little in the way of pride and no manners to speak of and hardly any respect for anybody or anything. But where I come from in North Florida, North Florida you never fail to say, yes, ma'am, and no, sir. Never sat on a made-up bed or put your hat on it. Never opened somebody else's icebox. Never left food on your plate never left the table without permission, and never forgot to say thank you for the teeniest favour. That's the way the ones before us were raised, and that's the way they raised us in the South. You all know, and we won't let anyone forget it, that the South is legend on top of legend on top of legend. Just read the stories of Eudora Welty, Carson McCullers, William Faulkner, Flannery O'Connor, Truman Capote, and Tennessee Williams. Listen to the songs and stories of Jimmy Rogers, Mother Maybell Carter, Hank Williams, Loretta Lynn, Elvis Presley and Dolly Parton. They all tell us in their own white trash ways that our good times are our best, our hard times are the worst, our tragedies the most extraordinary, our characters the strongest and the weakest, and our humblest meals the most delicious. There isn't much in between. And what really makes us different from others is that we are in love with our bad times and weakest characters, we laugh at our worst tragedies and with a gourmet's delight enjoy our simplest meals. We might tell, others, tell stories that others think are vulgar or sad, but we make them tales to entertain ourselves and anyone else who will listen. And we always cook enough food for unexpected company. Cooking food, laughing and storytelling, that's what we're made of and that's what we enjoy the most. My mama died pumping gas at a little filling station slash grocery store. Her store was the gathering place. All information, gossip or otherwise, started and stopped at Edna Ray's grocery store. If something happened worth gossiping about, and everything was, the store would fill up with people before you could say Jack Robinson. They would all come running out of the Palmetto Woods, hightailing it for Edna Ray's. She didn't gossip much. She listened and sold groceries and cases of beer and tank upon tank of gas. But in times of misfortune, she was always the first to respond. Edna Ray would drag out a cigar box and put a sign on it to collect money for people in need. One sign I clearly remember said, Please help Ivor George and Bertha Sue rebuild their little trailer house. It all burnt down this morning. Then she'd go to the kitchen and with me to help her, she'd cook up a big dinner of fried chitlins, a mess of turnip greens, enough whole cakes, that's cornbread cakes, mm. for a Bible story, a wash pot full of swamp cabbage stew and two Lord, large Our Lord scripture cakes. Everyone ate in the shade of the shed that covered the gas pumps. When the cigar box was filled to running over with money and all the food was gone, you'd find Ivor George and Bertha Sue lazing on the steps of the store, drunk as coots and full as ticks, with lots of company. <laughs> Bertha Sue's brother Johnny Boy saw the trailer burn to the ground. He never talked much after, until after the fire, but all through dinner he ran, ran around saying, Crack! And it all burnt down, Mama said. 
He was never really all there. <laughs> he had some kind of disease when he was a child, and they said it eat up part of his brain. Then there's big Reba Culpepper. Big, because there's little Reba also. Little Reba lives in burnt corn, Alabama. She's famous countrywide for Reba's rainbow icebox cake. Not too from Burns Corn is a place called Freehop, Alabama. Big Reba says she has a relative buried in a small family-type cemetery right out on the edge of town. He was some kind of Civil War hero, and when he died, he was a very rich man. His grave was richly and clearly marked with a big bronze obelisk that went way up, Reba said, and all his wives, six of them, children and grandchildren, were buried within spitting distance of his monument. The old, the old cemetery was all growed up with pine trees and needed a whole lot of attention to make it look halfway decent, Reba said. She was afraid if it wasn't cared for, someone would steal the big bronze marker. So I took it on myself to get up a cemetery cleaning party with rakes, shovels and hoes, fried chicken, hopping john, biscuits, iced tea and, of course, my famous rainbow icebox cake. Enough to kill us all. We loaded down the car and took her off like Moody's Goose for Free Hop, Alabama. When they reached the cemetery, the marker was gone, she said. I wasn't at all surprised. That is, until I found it cemented to the ground in front of the Baptist church. A cousin said he had moved the marker to the church because they needed something pretty out front, and Great Grandpa's marker was the prettiest thing in Flea Hop. Before, the only thing they had in front of the church was an old sign made out of cola bottles that said, Welcome to the Flea Hop Bas Baptist Church. I couldn't believe they didn't take the body with the marker, she said. He was embalmed in some kind of special way that was guaranteed for 500 years. Now they won't <laughs> even be able to find him. Then Reba let out a high-pitched laugh, slapped her leg and licked the last bit of rainbow icebox cake from her lips. So you see, telling stories, laughing and enjoying good food are all deeply rooted in our southern white trash background. We'll tell any story to make it funny and we'll bend over backwards to make a good meal. From cooking cooter, turtle, in its shell, to making Vicky stickies, to putting up blackberry acid in jars, hoping it'll ferment, but rather than running round willy-nilly telling stories, which I could do all day long, it might be quicker to get what I mean by white trash cooking if, as Betty Sue says, we go straight to the kitchen and get it did. <laughs> if you live in the South or have visited there lately, you know that the old white trash tradition of cooking is still very much alive, especially in the country. This tradition, is cookery, this tradition of cooking is different from soul food. White trash food is not as highly seasoned, except in the coastal areas of South Carolina, Georgia and North Florida, and along the Gulf coasts of Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana and Texas. It's also not as greasy, and you don't cook it as long. Of course, there's no denying that soul food is a kissing cousin. All the ingredients are just about the same. But white trash food, as you'll see by and by, has a great deal more variety. If someone asked me what sets white trash cooking aside from other kinds of cooking, I would have to name three of the ingredients. Salt meat, cornmeal and molasses. Every vegetable eaten is seasoned with salt meat, bacon or ham. Cornbread made with pure, pure cornmeal is a must with every meal, especially if there's pot liquor. It's also good between meals with a tall glass of cold buttermilk. And many foods are rolled in cornmeal before they are fried. Of course, nothing makes cornbread taste better than a spoon or two of bacon drippings and molasses. For the sweetest pies and pones you ever sunk a tuff into, molasses is the one ingredient you can't find a substitute for. And a little bit of it used on the side can top off the flavours of most white trash food. Even a day-old biscuit. A uh, biscuit, an American biscuit, isn't what we call a biscuit. It's a kind of savoury scone. Right. Okay, yeah. What we call a biscuit. Mm -hmm. They call a cookie. After ingredients, equipment is the next most important thing. As I've said before, there are no hard and fast rules, but skillets, Dutch ovens and cornbread pans, all of black cast iron, are the only utensils that give you that real white trash flavour and golden brown crust. And that's what you're after. And don't be too concerned about keeping them clean. Nettie Irene says, it's no trouble at all. All you've got to do is wrench them out, wipe them out with a dish rag 
and put them on the fire to dry out all the water. Then tear off a piece of grocery bag and fold it about two inches square. Dab it with grease and smear it round the bottom and sides till they're plenty covered. Let them cool and hang them on a nail. Net, it should be, you know, I'd love to do this with some of that, so it'd be so much better. Yeah. Nettie Irene also said that her mother would never use water on her black iron pots and pans, only dry cornmeal. She'd rub them until they were smooth. She said, Mama never threw away the used cornmeal, so she always had another cake of cornbread seasoned and in the making. Keep your black iron skillet in a good clean condition. It is as special to these recipes as the wok to Chinese cooking. Another real common feature of white trash cooking that sticks in my mind is that the recipes, because of their deliciousness, are swapped and passed around like a good piece of juicy gossip. And by the time they make it back to their source, they might be, and almost always are, completely different. Ray Nell, Betty Sue's sister-in-law, says, If I fry down three onions, she's going to fry down four. If I put in one pack of jello, she's going to dump in two. So with every cook trying to outdo the other one, and with all the different tastes, these recipes change so fast it's hard at times to catch, catch them still long enough to get them down on paper. I relied on old family cookbooks, yellowed letters, whispered secrets, and a lot of good hints straight from the kitchens of long-time southern cooks. But I have not written down the endless variations in elaborations on a single dish, and I have not revised the collected recipes unless they had to clarify a very confused situ situation and there were a few. I know you'll lay down and scream when you taste Loretta's chicken delight, and Tootie's fruited porquettes are fit for the table of a queen. Just how can you miss it with a dessert that calls for 23 Ritz crackers? And then there are recipes for coom, possum, alligator. These ingredients can even be found in New York City if you've got an hour and a good taxi driver. You'll be the talk of your social club or sewing circle when you prepare a resurre resurrection cake that's guaranteed to resurrect when you pour on the whiskey sauce. <laughs> or a Grand Canyon cake or water lily pie that's all going well look just like their namesakes. It's not hard to catch on to our ways. Even an awful cook will soon sop them up and become deathly accurate with the sweet potato pounds and Miss Bill's bucket dumplings. How? No hard and fast rules. Soon you'll find out, like the best of the white trash cooks, that there are many ways to fix the same thing. And before long, you'll prepare, be preparing these dishes with your eyes closed, with the basics of southern cooking just at your fingertips. I know you'll want to place this cookbook next to the Holy Bible on your coffee table, and I know you've got a coffee table with Polaroid snapshots under the glass. <laughs> and in the kitchen, you'll become another Miss Betty Sue Swilly in the true spirit of white trash cooking. Well, lovely. <laughs> well done, Alice. <laughs>